say, can you see by the dark early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight for the rampart we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rock and red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet And welcome to the Rock of Ages 1984. It's good to be home again. <laughs> I, too, welcome each and every one of you again to this wonderful Rock of Ages 1984, and, of course, very especially our wonderful W.O.W.s and our W.O.W. vets. Today is the close of the world's Olympics, but it's the opening of the continuous Word Olympics. Shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Unto whom every heart is open like the sunflower to the sun. So we, your people, have gathered here for this Rock of Ages 1984. Thank you for your divine benediction and blessing upon each individual, each family represented, and the entire ministry of the Word around the world. Thank you, Father, for your divine benediction and grace upon every activity that goes on here this week to bless your people at this wonderful time of homecoming. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. Amen. I've been away from home for quite a while and I'd come to miss the gentle smile of the folks that seem to mean the most of all to me. And I'd get to thinking from time to time that wouldn't it just be real fine to pick up and to go back home again? Mr. Please, Mr. Please, won't you let me off at that road sign? Let me feel that earth beneath my feet. I want to see that country sunshine. 
so Mister, let me off right over there Underneath that sign so fair At the corner of where the Willow Road And the Highway 29 I want to smell that grass so fresh and clean And take a ride on my dad's two-wheel machine Feel that air rushing through my hair once again I'm going to lay back right beside that pond and watch the ducks and geese and the fish and the swan. Get that good time feeling of being around home. Mr. Please, Mr. Please, won't you let me off at that roadside? Let me feel that earth beneath my feet. I want to see that country sunshine. So, Mr. Let me off right over there Underneath that sign so fair At the corner of where we'll road And Highway 29 I want to thank you, sir, for helping me out And I hope yours can take one heck of a shout When my feet come off this mat And hit that ground So, Mr. Pull this caddy over there's a sign saying everybody is welcome to come over. And Howard Allen shaking hands saying, Chucks, we ain't never had no strangers here in the way. That's right. So, Mr. Please, Mr. Please, won't you let me off at that road sign? Let me feel that earth beneath my feet. I want to see that country sunshine. So, mister, let me off right over there, underneath that sign so fair, at the corner of where we'll road and highway 29. One more. At the corner of where we'll road and highway 29. God bless. When I look back at those short months out on the field, my mind recalls the way the people's hearts were healed. And I remember all the miracles I saw. And how I learned that God will never let me fall. I heard the call. I gave my all. I'm standing tall. God's faithful wow and back. I took the time and set my mind to be God's wow ambassador. How can I tell you what my family means to me? The times we laughed and cried and loved so tenderly. No, we'll always be united in our souls. And we'll remember why we love each other so. We heard the call. We gave our all. We're standing tall. God's faithful while ambassadors. We took the time and set our minds to be God's wow ambassadors. Now I wear this special pin upon my heart The year it represents to me was just the start Another wants to know what wow is like With all the love of God I will reply Just heed the call Set your mind to be God's wow ambassador. I heard the call and gave my all. God's faithful wow ambassador. I took the time and set my mind to be God's wow ambassador. Bless you, wow.
brows. I'm looking at the world you left behind a year ago. Just how much it took, no one can really know. When you heard God's call, you knew you had to go. Nothing seemed to matter anymore. And you've come a long way to get back home. So hold your head high. You've finally come to where you belong. Now is your time, your hour to shine, the day you've waited for so long. You're a wow ambassador and you come home. So you signed your name to give the word that you've received. And you placed your heart in God's forevermore. Stand to walk out on what you believe. As you did, God opened every door. Come a long way to get back home. So hold your head high. You finally come to where you belong. Now is your time. how proud we really are. Only God alone can thank you for your stand. You're the one he loves and you're the one he's waiting for. You're the one who lives within his plan.
God has waited so long for believers like you. Remember you represent him in all that you do. So be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving. Be bold and be strong in the Lord. God bless you, wow, ambassadors. I love you for speaking his word. And you make me cry tears of thankfulness for each of your lives. My heart overflows when I think of you. How precious you are in God's sight. Only his word can express the love I have for you inside. And you make me cry tears of thankfulness for each of your lives. Let's keep the word hot united, we agree. We're moving God's word till all men have heard. We're epistles for all to see. We are an open book, no man read of men. We'll give us all to us till Christ come back again. Great 
wonderful love and grace. Thank you that we can be in our living epistles for you. Thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your goodness unto us through Christ Jesus. Amen. I'd like for you to take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. And welcome to the opening teaching session of the Rock of Ages, 1984. It is good to have all of you here again. This believer's family gathering has to be one of the unique things happening in our day and in our time. It takes a voluminous amount of planning and work to make all of you as comfortable and blessed as we can. Some of our staff are required to work from one walk of ages to the next and then all of our in-residence and graduated, graduated corps come in early to help. The way corps being responsible for the welcoming home of our WOWs is always exciting and thrilling to me. However, nothing is ever more exciting to me than when I have the privilege and joy of saying, God bless and welcome to the Rock of Ages. It's good to be home again. It takes approximately 4,000 dedicated believers to help to take care the best we can for all of you. We wish we could do it better for all of you. But you know, our workers and our believers are just fantastic. Maybe not everything is always to your liking, but there can't be anything wrong with the word or the fellowship that you are a part of. Some of our believers have to be responsible for what the world considers menial tasks, such as cleaning the toilets, 
hauling all the garbage, taking care of parking, bless patrol, and so forth and so forth. But whatever needs to be done, people, if it is done with the love of God in the renewed mind, it is great and wonderful. And it is as great and wonderful as any other job requirement or fulfillment. Tonight, I'm teaching, but in God's sight, I don't feel I am any more important than all those who blessed your life in some of those other ways. And I personally want to express my thanks and appreciation to every worker in every capacity they have and are serving you. Tonight I would like to serve you by teaching you the word on the subject of reaching the world with the word, living epistles, our commissioning. Perhaps the most providential and truthful statement for this rock of ages is the University of Life reenactment of the older Burma Burma Shave advertisements. As I came from the east parking area, that parking lot and that registration area, I noticed the following along the road. Tell all the people what you have heard. Living epistles speak God's word, University of Life. In my heart and mind, people, the whole truth of this rock of ages is wrapped up in the words. Living epistles speak God's word. The concept of reaching the world with the word is still the primary will of God, according to Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given me in heaven and in where? Earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And then the corruptors of the text added the rest of that verse. So those words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost, are scratched. And it reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I, Jesus Christ, am with you always, even unto the end of the world. There's also a record in Mark 16 that I'd like for you to look at. Mark chapter 16. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach or herald the gospel to every creature. But the word creature is the word one. It doesn't do much good to try to teach the word of God to a German short-haired pointer. <laughs> but we're to preach the gospel, the good news to everyone, to share it, to herald it forth. And verse 16 says, He that you herald it forth to, that believeth and is baptized, not in water, but with Christ in them, the hope of glory, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be Damn. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. 
In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God, which is the hand of blessing. And they, the believers, went forth. They went as wise people. They went forth and preached, heralded everywhere the truth of the greatness of the word, the Lord working with them, and the Lord confirming the word that they spoke, which was the word of God. He confirmed with signs following. The key words for this rock of ages are the words living epistles, which are to be read of all men. It also means to send the word to someone else. An epistle is generally a longer letter or treatise of explanation or injunction. You get a letter from a friend and it's a half a page long, that's a letter. But if that friend writes you seven pages, it's an epistle. Jesus Christ in his ministry class, he first commissioned 12, and then later on he commissioned 70 more. In Mark chapter 6, listen to this wonderful record in verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two. And he gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should not take for their journey save a staff only, no script, no luggage as baggage, no bread, no money, but be shod with sandals and not put on two shirts. And he said, In whatsoever place ye enter into house, there abide till ye part from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for who? Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. The commission that we have from the Lord Jesus Christ, from God, that we go forth to teach people and to share with people the greatness of God's word. In Luke chapter 10, which was brought up earlier tonight already, but in verse 1 of chapter 10, we read the following. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is what? Right. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are what? Few. Some of you know that I've been praying for years that we'd have 4,000 WOWs. We have never put 4,000 WOWs on the field. And again, it looks to me like this year we will not have 4,000. 
when you consider the need of the world people, 4,000 moving out toward the need of the world, it's such a small amount. We need to pray. We need to believe. We need to witness. We need to go back into the communities of our areas and get people to commit their lives to go well. The harvest truly is great. What's the worth of a soul? It's worth more than all the wealth of the world. Outside of our ministry, I don't know anybody who really believes that. They'd rather have the worth of the world than the accreditation before God. One of the things I saw that one of the athletes or heard one of the athletes say that was competing in the Olympics is he walked in, but if he won a gold medal, he'd be driving out a Rolls Royce. You see, that to me is about the lowest thing I can think of. He came in with nothing except his ability, but what he's looking for is that he wins a gold medal, gets the accreditation, and then has plenty of money so he can buy a Rolls Royce. You and I do not mind walking into the needs of the hearts of lives of people. The harvest is out there. All we need is the laborers. Those of you who had a successful wow year, and not everybody had a successful wow year, because we had some of them leave the field, some screw up, cop out, but the vast majority did. Those of you who had a successful wow year know that it's one of the magnificent, wonderful things in your life and that the harvest is out there. All we need to do is get the people, like Julie spoke about. We just need people out there like she witnessed. The harvest is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, who is God Almighty, that he would send forth labors into his harvest. And that has been my prayer all these years, that God would give us more and more wows. But God cannot give us wows until people get their ears open. And ears are opened by wows speaking to people about going wow, about core speaking to people about going wow. Look at verse 16, class. Jesus Christ said, He that then he that heareth you, heareth what? Right. And he that despises you or doesn't like what you're saying, despises what? In the early days of your wow experience, I'm sure that many of you when when somebody would reject what you said to them, you felt sorry on the inside, you felt badly. You wondered if you had really screwed it up. You wondered if you had said the wrong thing. Am I right, people? You bet your life. But the Word says, don't worry about it, because he that despises you when you speak the Word doesn't despise you. He despises God's only begotten Son, him that sent me. And look at verse 17. And the 70, the 70... And that's not as many as we had on the field this year. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus Christ said in verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Because those 70 went out and proclaimed the word, Satan himself had to come down from heaven and intercede so his people wouldn't all screw up and drop out. And I believe some of you have experienced and have seen that great truth also this year in your life. Look at the gospel, the book of Acts, please, chapter 1. Living epistles is one of our, 
is, is a commission to us to be living epistles. In Acts chapter 1, and I just taught this recently here at the Way International in verse 4, and he, talking about Jesus Christ, was salted with them, was the text. And after the covenant of salt with the twelve apostles, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait until the promise of the Father. The word for is the word until. Waiting for something is not going to increase the speed with which it comes, class. You just have to wait until God's time. Like the return of Christ, waiting for the return of Christ isn't going to bring it. So we just wait until everything is fulfilled and God will send back his wonderful son. He told them to wait until the promise of the Father, which saith he have heard of me. And in verse 8, Under this covenant assault, he said, you shall receive power. You have to work the words will and shall dramatically in the word people. To will may be permissive, but when it says ye shall, it's not a permissive thing, it's in an absolute class. Don't you understand? It said, verse 8, ye shall absolutely receive. And the word receive is the word lambano, manifest, evidence, power. You're going to evidence the dynamis, the power of Christ in you, class. When that panumahagion is come unto you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, You see, people were commissioned to be witnesses. You went wow for this year. But if you hadn't gone wow, you still were commissioned by God in Jesus Christ to be a wow. So why not go wow? Some of you here tonight in the Big Top and the other places where you're watching and listening, you haven't signed up yet to go wow. I know God is working in your heart. And if you allow God to work in your heart, then why don't you still sign up and go wow? We have a place you can sign up. I don't know where it is, but... If they won't sign you up, you come to me. I sign you up. That's right. He said, you shall lambano this power when that Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth, people. And the uttermost part of the earth is word over the world, people. I doubt if hardly anybody has believed this since 70 A.D. about the word over the world until our ministry came along. People laugh at us to think word over the world. Well, let them laugh. I don't care. They don't pay the bills for this ministry. They don't go while you do. They haven't stood on the word like we have, so I don't pay any attention to them, class. All I pay attention to is the word, okay? Look at chapter 2 of Acts. After Peter had been preaching that wonderful sermon, he comes to the conclusion of it. After they ask him, what they should do in verse 38. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Not baptized in water, but in the name. And what that name represents is the power, people, that's in your life to be a witness for him. On Wednesday night, when I get the privilege of teaching again, I will again show you that it's Christ in you. We have never magnified the great truth, people, of Christ in you. If it's Christ in you, then all the power that's available from God in Christ is in you. So we just need to renew our minds and take a stand because we're commissioned people to witness and to hold forth God's word. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall what? Okay, did he call you? Then the promise is to you and to all that are far off. And I love that the promise is unto your children. One of the great joys to me today has been seeing the wonderful little children that are here at the Rock of Ages all the way from little babies on up. And I have just been so blessed today seeing this on the grounds of the Way International. For the promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So we have been commissioned, whether we like it or not, to hold forth God's word. And the rewards throughout eternity will be considered in the sense, in the light of how faithful we were as stewards of God in witnessing God's word. I'm going to close with a word of prayer tonight. And I think tonight's a wonderful night for some of you to get to bed a little earlier because tomorrow will be a great big wonderful day. And you've been up a long time today. Some of you stood in line a long time. And tomorrow will be a wonderful day in God's Word. And I'm truly thankful and appreciative for the opportunity of teaching on this, the opening night of the Rock of Ages, 1984. And I'm sure there's no doubt in your mind of my love for you for God is word and his wonderful son, Jesus Christ. And after I have a prayer, I'd like for Brian Bliss to sing, You've been born again to win. Because you're born first time to have life. When you're born again, you are a born again witness and you're commissioned to witness the truth of God's word. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love, your grace, your goodness. Thank you for the privilege of allowing me to open this wonderful Rock of Ages on this Sunday night, August the 12th, here at the Way International Headquarters. And thank you, Father, for all of your people around the nations of the world this night through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Sometimes I feel like there's just no place left to go but away. I've thought about New York City, New Orleans, or West L.A. In my mind, I've packed my bag and I've tried to leave for days. My heart was heading through. I was on my way well, Every life has its bad times and its trials I know it's hard as heck for a broken heart to smile and I have felt like giving up once in a while Running away from problems, it ain't my style. Cause I was born again to win. I was raised to stand and not give in. Well, my hands were made to hold on to what is right. And my back was made to stand up straight. 
Twitter is what believers won't ever be. Cause your life is what you make, it ain't nothing for free. And when we look into the mirror, we want to be proud of what we see. We were born again to win. We were raised to stand and not give in. Well, our hands were made to hold on to what is right. And our backs were made to stand up straight. Now we may bend, but we'll never break. And our eyes were made to see the light. 